Hey guys, Tacoma Comics here, and I'm here today to talk about my friend Miss Marvel. Obviously, the big news of the day was Captain Marvel, that really kick-ass trailer. Man, I love that. But uh, I want to talk a little bit about Miss Marvel, and kind of two things prompted that. One was obviously the trailer for Captain Marvel dropped, and a lot of my friends are speculating about when Kamala is going to make her appearance. Is it going to be in Captain Marvel? Is it going to be in Avengers 4? Where, where is it going to come up? Will there be a Champions movie? Will there be an A-Force movie? Who knows? Um, speculation's fun, but it could go on forever. So uh, this is Miss Marvel 31, right? And this is the uh, Hans variant for number 31. And the second reason that I started thinking about Miss Marvel today was I finally found the uh, Virgin variant um, of this on eBay for 60 bucks. In most places I saw, it was raw for about 95 to 105. Uh, slabbed in like a 9.4, 9.6 was like 160. Slabbed at a 9.8 it was like 200. And I really wanted this bad, but you know, people say to wait and it will pay off. I was looking on eBay two days ago and there were a whole bunch of like $100 ones and some guy had it at 70 or best off or free shipping. I typed in 60 and boom. I got it. Looks like a good copy. Now I'm kind of crossing the old fingers and hoping that I get it. So be patient and you'll you'll get you'll find what you want. So I thought, you know, I've been wanting to do this for a while. Why don't I bust out my Miss Marvels, do a little show off and uh some uh informative uh collecting to anybody who's a Miss Marvel fan. So that was issue thirty one you just saw, but it's called the fiftieth issue because uh G. Willow Wilson had the misfortune of um writing for Marvel or starting Miss Marvel when Marvel did this weird numbering thing where everything got up to like an issue 12 or 13, she got up to 19 and then they rebooted everything. Not that they stopped the series or like rebooted the series. They just kind of renumbered everything back to number one. So like, you know, Howard the Duck to the Famous, this is only our second number one this year. And Unbeatable Squirrel Girl went through the same thing and it was just kind of weird. Um, you know, it was just one of Marvel's rebranding things, but issue one of volume four, doesn't like start the story of Kamala Khan and the Terrigan myths all over again. It just sort of picks up another story after issue 19 of um, volume three. So issue 31 that I just showed you, 31 from volume four plus 19 from volume three equals 50 from the two volumes. And that's why that was the big uh, one with the celebrated Hans variant because it was the 50th issue of Miss Marvel. So, uh, between volume four and volume three, I have all of these. If you can count, that's way more than 50. Um, I'll tell you about that in a second. I got one more, uh, an extra lot right here. What that is, is that is everything that's come out in volume four so far. So 31 issues plus variants and a couple repeats. Uh, but then behind that is all my collections of volume three. And I have one almost entirely complete, and when I say complete, I'm talking about completest, every variant, every printing, every comic in um, volume three. I have two other full sets of just one through 19 without any um, variants or second printings. And then this last one that doesn't fit in the box anymore is one through 19 missing 12, 13, 14, and 18, I think. I got to double check. So I'm a little obsessed. Uh, you know, I have a lot of comics, but most of you have a lot of comics hanging out in, in, in your room and stuff. Um, that's no big deal, right? You've got comics in the closet. You've got comics on the bed. You haven't put things away yet from Rose City. You're still trying to figure out this new room you got, but you got a lot of comics. So I'm not bragging that I got a lot of comics. I'm just showing you this is one of my loves, Miss Marvel, and I wanted to share it with you guys. So uh, let's start off. I kind of start this box a little bit earlier than um, than Miss Marvel number one. I used to have Captain Marvel 14 and 17 in here. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, Captain Marvel 14 is the first cameo appearance of Kamala Khan. Captain Marvel 17 is the first uh, cameo appearance of Kamala Khan with her uniform hanging in the closet, Miss Marvel uniform in the closet. And her shirt kind of bulges and starts to rip when she's embiggening her arm and her muscles are coming out. Uh, Captain Marvel 17 second print is the first appearance of uh, Miss Marvel on a cover. 
Um, and then Marvel now, all new Marvel now, point one number one is the second cover appearance, but the first story contain, uh, pertaining to Kamala Khan. So that's where I start in this. Captain Marvel went back to the Captain Marvel box. I got Kelly Sue to sign them at Rose City. I don't actually know which box they're going to. I used to have like three copies of those, but I, I, I sold a couple on eBay when they were getting super hot when news of the movie first hit. So I still have three copies. I didn't realize I had three copies. Let's put this down to two. Uh, I got three copies of the Marvel Now Point One. Uh, one of those is signed by G. Willow Wilson. This is also signed. Um, this is Avengers Ultron Revolution. This is the first appearance of animated Kamala Khan in a comic. This is before the Marvel Rising. This was in Disney Avengers um, animated thing that she was in. Uh, then I got all the generations. Um, there were four covers to that. This, I believe, was the original. This one is a variant. There actually was a second print of the um, cover A, I guess you could call it, or the original cover. Uh, this one is a Kevin Anka cover. Uh, Kevin Anka's signature is really badly done in silver down here. It's kind of ticked at that. Um, he does a couple of the Faith covers with Jody Houses running Faith. Um, good artist and really love that cover. Just wish that was a better signature, right? You can see G. Willow Wilson's signature here, but you can't see Kevin Anka's signature down there very well. This one I would love to get signed by the artist. This is the Fried Pie variant by Miss Stephanie Hans. Very, very, very cool. Um, you can see in kind of the way Kamala's hair comes out, some of the sort of features that she likes to do. A little side note on Stephanie Hans. She has a virgin variant for Ironheart number one coming out. I think you can get it through Stadium Comics. I haven't purchased it yet because they're asking 100 bucks to get like four different issues. Um, and one of them is the Ironheart variant from Hans. The other two, excuse me. That's um, the other three are kind of like, eh, I'm not loving them. So I don't know if I want to drop a hundred dollars, but man, it's beautiful. And you know, I missed the, uh, I missed the Stephanie Hans version variant for 31. So I might do that. All right. So now let's uh, talk about our number ones. Uh, just to be thematically in order, I'm going out of order. There were several variant covers to um, issue one, but I'm going to show those in a minute. Issue one. And this came out in April of 2014. Second printing came out in May. The third printing, and then they call this the third sketch printing. These both came out in June. Um, now, if you follow along barcode numbers, 171 would actually indicate that this is a variant to issue one, um, but it is not a, uh, a, a third printing, but they officially call this the third sketch variant. So I don't know why um, or what's up with that. This is the fourth. This one came out in August. This is not the fifth. They don't have any printing listed as the fifth parent printing. Um, I've never been able to find one. I've checked comic book database or comicbookdb.com and another database website I looked up just to make sure I got it right for this video. There is no fifth printing of Miss Marvel number one. So they skip right to the sixth and seventh printing. I missed the sixth printing there, sorry. Sixth printing. The seventh printing, which I think looks super cool. I love these colors. And I love this this um, detailed work on on the scarf. That's just gorgeous. Um, and then there is uh, the True Believers, which you could call the eighth printing. So I think the we were talking August for that one, um, and then like December and or December, and then January of 2015 is when that one came out. Something like that. I'm, I couldn't, I kept looking at the website trying to get it memorized before I showed you guys, but I, I don't think I have those perfectly right. But that's pretty much the order. Um, so then talking about the the variants that came out, this is, oh man, this is in beautiful condition. I don't see any spine ticks. I I love this. Sorry, show it to you guys. So um. G. Willow Wilson, Art Adams, both signed this. Um, I love this. I don't love the the lack of like 
teeth definition there, but something about just the, the smile and the absolute just like glee in this look, this power pose and the outfit. I love this, um, the, the absolutely uh, massive fist up here is kind of oversized compared to the rest of it. So I just like, it's just really well done. And just something about this is really striking. So this is the one in 100 sketch variant. Um, and then that kind of in my collection pairs with, and I've told this story before, so if you've heard this story before, I do apologize. So apologize for looking away, but you saw the state of my comics and trying to pick something up here. This is a 9.8. I mean, I would say this is a 9.6 or 9.8, but it's not graded. Um, this is a 9.8. A little upset because it wasn't perfectly put in the case. There's a tiny bit of overlap there. Um, but again, I was on Amazon and I was trying to get the color variant to this because I don't have the color variant. And the color variant um, in a 9.8 was listed at 125. And that's like a 1 in 50 variant. What I ended up getting was they shipped this to me. Uh, this is worth a lot more on eBay now. I haven't seen them sold, but people are listing them for three, four, even six hundred dollars, which sounds crazy. Probably is probably too good to be true. But I think this one in one hundred is worth more than the hundred dollars that I thought I was paying for the one in one one in fifty color variant. So kind of a little strange. The other um, variant that they did was Jamie McKelvey did the costume variant. These were kind of pretty popular going around back in 2014, 2015. Um, I'd love to get McKelvey's signature on this. That would be absolutely awesome. Once we're done with the printings and the variants, let's take a look at two through, let me go from two through six to start. So issue two, another classic cover. Like all these original covers were just pretty classic. Um, you know, it's dark with the eyes and the star behind, but it's, it's definitely Miss Marvel. You get to know who she is. Um, that went to a, a second printing. Nothing fancy here, just a different color at the bottom. And then issue two went to a third printing with a yellow strip at the bottom. A fourth printing with a purple strip at the bottom. Then issue three, again, now she's got a mask. Um, this one, there's air billowing this scarf, but not the uh, not the hair, but we don't talk about that. Um, issue three, first printing, second printing, third printing, and then issue three also had a variant done by Annie Wu, which goes for a little bit, like $20 or something. I think I paid like 25 for it. It's, uh, it's lost a little bit of its luster. Um, when it first came out, it was, it was pretty sought after, not like major thing, but you know, kind of big. It, I've seen it a little bit lower on eBay now than I paid for it, um, but that's okay. Fourth went to a first and second printing. Another one of my absolute favorite covers. I've got to get in a better bag so I don't have this stupid price sticker on. But the fifth, and here's where I also was holding off doing this video. The video has been in my mind for a long time. I could not find the second printing of issue five anywhere. Um, just ghost. I mean, as ghost as, as an issue can be because I could not find it on the internet, could not find it in stores. I mean, it's not a rare comic. It's not worth a lot, but I just could not find it. I finally found a guy like seven bucks on eBay. His feedback was not great. So I was kind of freaking out that something bad is going to happen. Turned out he shipped it beautifully. Um, it arrived quickly. It was inexpensive. So I was really, really happy with that. Happy to get that. It's classy red wine in a drinking glass. Don't judge. Issue six, and this is kind of a fun cover with, with the fist coming around like that, but to me this is the end of like those first iconic covers where they were establishing her character and, and the way she looked. Um, issue six had a second printing. This is the last one that had more than one printings, but to go six issues to get a second printing, you can tell this is a popular character. Um, for people who are fans of her, you absolutely know what I'm talking about. There are a lot of Miss Marvel detractors. They kind of um, say, hey, you know, the uh, 
the sales figures are down for the comics. They don't sell a lot. You've got to look at how popular this character is in trades and in, in collections and hardcover, in digital and in alternative stories, video games and Marvel Rising, stuff like that. She, she is staying, um, no doubt about it. So right here, we have the Guardians of the Galaxy variant. I wish this didn't exist because it has nothing to do with Miss Marvel. I guess the movie is coming out or something. In general, I don't like variants that have nothing to do with the property that they're a variant of. Um, but, you know, I make exceptions because, like I said, I'm trying to complete this whole series. So I did. So let's see. Boom. Here is the rest of them. Seven was a great storyline where uh, she fought with Wolverine in the sewers and um, didn't realize that Wolverine was getting beat up pretty bad because this was during the death of Wolverine um, storyline. So he was dying there. Issue eight, she met up with Lockjaw, uh, which led nicely into issue nine, where she met up with a character that I really don't like very much, Medusa, but she learned that she was an inhuman and what that all meant and, and you know, this stuff like that. Not if they can do so bad. I like some of the Inhumans, just not her. Back to what I consider some iconic covers. This again, you know, it highlights her in a kind of giddy schoolgirlish um, way, but with some really, you know, nice tones and coloring there. This is the, the Miss Marvel that I, that I really like. Um, again, I wish there was teeth outlined, <laughs> but uh, that's okay. Issue 12, of course, Loki tried to break up the uh, Valentine's Day dance, and Miss Marvel had something to say about that. Loki. Issue 13. This is not, um, this is not a, a variant of any sort. It looks like a Woman of Power variant, but it's not. It's just a really cool cover. And if you look closely, uh, this Miss Marvel comics, the uh, 2006. The 77 is, so 2006, I think 2004, no, sorry, the 1977, the 2004, and the 2006 run. I believe I got that right. You guys can um, correct me if I'm wrong. And then issue 14, boom. This one for a 13 variant is um, a Miss Marvel variant. This is... Uh, Woman of, I guess this was the Woman of Power. I can only assume it was a Woman of Power variant. Otherwise, it looks kind of weird. Uh, this is one of my all-time favorite covers. Uh, and I, I just read the guy's name the other day. Something Piesco, I believe. Uh, not well known to me, but I, I used to live in New York City. And I grew up in, in Long Island, and then I moved to the city after college. This is Central Park in the fall to a T. Um, I just love this cover. This cover is gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Um, absolutely beautiful. Really excited for that. And then they went and screwed it up with a variant for issue 14. What the duck? <laughs> Get it? What the duck? Get it? What the duck? Yeah, let's just put Howard the Duck on all of our covers and have what the duck variants so suckers like me will buy them. What the duck? Come on, man. Get real. Issue 15. Is he a boyfriend or is he an evil guy trying to use his powers for ne'er-do-well uh, situations? You'll have to read to find out. Issue 16. Okay, Jersey City is always played large because uh, Miss Marvel is from Jersey City. And then towards the end, never been a fan of this cover. Um, again, there's no teeth outline. That seems to be a thing. Uh, and that's okay. That's the artist thing. Um, I don't know what's going on with Captain Marvel here. She's like, there's a growth hanging off my waist. Uh, I got to go home and feed the cats. Um, I'm not sure. Like, I don't know. Don't love the cover. Bam. Love this cover though. Teen love. Bruno's thinking of holding hands. She's thinking of being a champion on the Avengers. Being a champion. Get it? Champion. Didn't do that on purpose. Um, 18, this is called the manga variant. Uh, okay, uh, it's a little bit manga-esque. Um, I just think this is a much better cover than that, that last one I showed with, with Captain Marvel. Definitely like it. Don't really look at this. I mean, the eyes are big, but it could just be the artist in how to draw eyes. <laughs> it's not really manga. So I'm just kidding around there. 
And then the last issue, again, I like this, nice iconic cover. Wish she had teeth. What are you going to do? Um, really nice cover. This is the last issue of Volume 3. And then because they were doing it, I had to get the Kirby Monster variant. Do I want the Kirby Monster variant? Do I care about the Kirby Monster variant? No, no I don't. Um, so there you go. What am I missing? I'm missing the color. One in 150 incentive variant of this. It's just colored. It's also really nice. I'm just trying to find that, like, this is the time to buy it. This is the good deal. This is the good seller. And I'm missing the issue two variant that Jorge Molina did. And that is the absolute gorgeous one. Uh, I'll put a picture of it in a second. That's the one where she is looking up. Chewing bubblegum, hands on her hips, blowing a big bubble at the sky on top of a rooftop building. Uh, uh, I think that was an incentive variant for issue two. Uh, it's one in 100. I'm not seeing it anywhere in like good condition or from reputable seller for less than $900. And I'm not paying $900. I paid a lot of money for some comics. Um, I think to date, most expensive comic I've, I've purchased was this one. That was a special purchase about a year ago. I, I sold my record collection, had some money coming in, but I'm not paying $900 for a comic. At least not yet. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, you know, I'll get it eventually. Something will happen. Something will come up. I will figure out a way to make that happen because it's 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 something I want. It's a great cover, and. It's, it's, it'll complete the collection, that and the uh, Adam's color variant. So, uh, yeah, let me know what you think about Miss Marvel. Put some comments down there in the subscription. I uh, would love to hear from, from Miss Marvel fans. I'd love to hear from completists. You know, uh, if you're not a, a Miss Marvel fan, what is it that you complete? Do you collect every single cover by one artist or every, do you do the Marvel 25th anniversary covers with those little, um, you know, the frames? You do um, all the recalled comics. I mean, what is it that you collect that you like have to get everything of? Let me know. I'd really love to hear from you guys on what's going on. Sorry, there's gnats in this house. I don't know. Anyway, that's me. I'm done. Uh, I will talk to you guys soon. Thanks a lot for watching. Take care.